Father, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would give us clarity and revelation in your word, Lord, that we may come to our understanding of what you have for us this morning, Lord. Father, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, this, this week, I just wanted to uh, extend my thanks to the WMs. Uh, we got invited to uh, their function on Saturday. And uh, I praise and thank the Lord that, you know, we had, we had so much food. And uh, I don't know who brought the shrimp, but they really knew my heart. Oh, Michelle. <laughs> And they had all the shrimp peeled, but they know I don't eat shrimp without with the shell on. <laughs> but I, I want to extend my thanks to all of you. I'm pretty sure they had, uh, they, well, from the testimonies that I've heard, that you had a whole lot of fun in, in, in associating with the women. So men, get on the stick. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My message today is uh, titled, An Unforgiving Spirit. An Unforgiving Spirit. It may be three years ago, one year ago, maybe it was yesterday, someone hurt you and you really felt it. Or maybe it was a year ago, last month, this morning, Someone hurt someone you love. Maybe it was a family member. Maybe it was a person at your workplace. Or maybe it was just a good friend. And you wanted to retaliate. But you felt that you couldn't. So you stuffed it. You stuffed it on the inside of you. See, the flesh, natural response of our flesh is to retaliate. Because you felt that what had happened was not right. It was unjust. And the person, person, is accountable for the hurt that they have caused. That's our <coughs> fleshly <coughs> reaction. So, but ultimately you decided, well, no, I'm not going to retaliate. So you stuffed it on the inside of you. And as time go by, you might have forgotten about it. But it's still there. Still inside of you. Boiling. Doing the damage inside of you. See, the most dangerous thing that a person can have is unforgiveness. When you stuff resentment, hostility, <coughs> anger, and bitterness inside of you. This all adds up to unforgiveness. And instead of dealing with it, we just deal with it. We just keep it on the inside. After a while we might forget about it. 
yes, you might forget about it. But then again, it's still inside of you, doing its work. <coughs> the acid starts building up, it's boiling inside of you. See, unforgiveness may be stuff, but you do not escape the consequences of an unforgiving spirit. See, unforgiveness is an attitude. It's a disastrous attitude. It's actually an attitude of rebellion. Why? Because you are going against the Word of God. You may not feel it, but it's still doing <coughs> damage inside of you. <coughs> it affects your body. You may have cancer and not know it. You may have heart disease and do not feel the effect until later on. See, the Bible teaches us that to forgive one another You might think, where is the justice? Where is the justice? We need to realize that nothing gets past God. Nothing gets past God. We serve an all-knowing God. An omniscience God. See, God says, I will, res I will assume that responsibility is not for you to retaliate. Leave it to me. I know what I'm doing. Amen. I'll take care of it. I'll deal with the other person. You know, when I had put together this message, I never realized that, you know, you can hold that unforgiveness inside of you. And the thing that came to light was that when I was in business, there are a lot of people that you know, pay the bills. You know, I, I, a lot of people that owed me money. And as I thought about that, I don't know if you have come across that, but when people owe you money, you never forget. And people that owe you money, you always forget. And you know, I used to always think about it that, you know, why is that? Why can't people be responsible and, and meet their obligations? And I, I was resentful about that because, you know, you work hard, you expect to be paid, but then, you, you know, people do not pay you. You see, retaliation creates more anger hostility, resentment, and bitterness. Let's turn to Romans 12, 19. I'm going to read from the 
NIV. NIV. Let's see where Romans It says, Do not take revenge, my friends. It's from the NIV. But leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. And like I've said before, God knows what he's doing. Let him work on that other person. When I see those people that, that have owed me money, you know, the first thing that came to my mind is that because of I, I, I have read the scripture, I said, seek of God. Seek of God. <laughs> but the word says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So what we got to do is give it to God. He's going to take care of it. He knows what he's doing. He knows everything. See, when we want to retaliate, it doesn't make you feel any better. It only builds up more anger, hostility, <coughs> bitterness, resentment. Think about it. If you are in a confrontation with somebody and you retaliate, it only draws up to a higher level. It goes on and on and on. You say one thing, it comes back to you, it, you know, it goes back and forth. So retaliation doesn't make you feel better, it makes you more angry, actually, and more bitter and more hostile in that environment. You see, retaliation is not God's will. Because he said what? Vengeance is mine, say the Lord. And Jesus might say to them, the Lord will take care of things. <coughs> As believers, we have been forgiven much. We have forgiven much. So we have no right, no right, to have anything against anyone because we have received much generosity, mercy from God Himself. You can't remember what the cross means. What did Jesus do on the cross? Jesus died on the cross for what? The forgiveness of our sins. The forgiveness of our sins. This goes to show you what the love of God is. He sent His only Son so that we can be forgiven of our sins. That's what the cross is all about. So if we go and define what forgiveness is, we can sum it up and say, Forgiveness, giving up resentment against someone, and the right to get even, and the right to get even, no matter what that person has done to you. Giving up resentment against someone, and the right to get even, no matter what has been done to you. That's what forgiveness is. I surrender my right to hurt you back no matter what. That's what forgiveness is. I surrender my right to hurt you back no matter what you did to me. Let's turn to Matthew 18, 21 to 22. What did Peter say? Hey, brought Jesus, how 
only times I'm going to forgive, you know, the guy that wronged me. Seven times? What did Jesus say? No. Seven times seventy. Seven times seventy. And that does not mean four hundred and ninety. That does not mean four hundred and ninety. You see, forgiveness goes on and on. We have to forgive and forgive and forgive. Yeah, but you know, you don't know what they did to me. He or she did to me. The word of God says to forgive, forgive, and forgive. You see, no matter how often we are hurt by others, we should extend our forgiveness. That's what Jesus is saying. It's not no 490. It's forever, forever, forever. No matter how many times that person hurts you. See, the flesh does not react that way. That's why this, the Bible says that we need to crucify our flesh daily. And that's what it means. The flesh wants to go one way, but your spirit man goes according to what the word of God says. So there's a comfort there. So we have to crucify that flesh and make it obey to what we want the spirit man to do. Because when you look at this in principle, think about it. Since you were saved, since you were saved, how many times did you ask for forgiveness? Some of our 490 is one day's time. How many times you asked for forgiveness since you were saved? Did he ever once tell you, no, I don't, I don't can forgive you. Maybe Lama, but no, 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 I'm just joking. <laughs> he wasn't listening, so that's okay. But how many times did he tell you, no, Wait, I'm not going to forgive you this time. No. Every time you ask for forgiveness, He will forgive you. Amen. So we, as followers of Jesus, should always forgive. And forgive and keep on forgiving. Let's define now what unforgiveness is. Unforgiveness is opposite of forgiveness. Okay, you guys got it? Okay, let's look what uh, unforgiveness is. It's the deliberate, willful refusal to give up one's right to get even based on the attitude that someone's got to pay for the wrong that was done. Deliberate, willful refusal to give up one's right to get even based on the attitude that someone's got to pay for the wrong that was done. Many of us feel that way sometimes, right? Because of what people have done to you. <coughs> Turn with me to Ephesians 4. Sometimes when you go through this, you got to go back, Amplify, NIV, New King James. Sometimes you got to go through the message. Uh, sometimes it's a lot of work. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 29. This comes from the NIV. 
do not let unholy any unholy wholesome them. Do not let any unwholesome talk come from out of your mouth. Do not let any unwholesome mouth. Do not let anything negative come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful for building building up others according to their needs. That it may benefit those who listen. So in essence he's saying that make sure no negative words come out of your mouth. So those around you that are listening would not have any negative effect. And then it goes down to say, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. And with malice, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. See, the things that come out of the mouth when you're angry needs to be watch. Make sure that no negative words come out of your mouth. See, as followers of Christ, we are commanded. That's a command in, in verse... Uh, did I go down to verse 32? No. Okay, and it says going down to verse 32. Eh? And be kind... Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also forgave you. So no, let no negatives, negativity come out of you, but you have to be kind to one another. Because in other words, you're rebelling against what God is telling you. He's telling you to forgive, but then you're not forgiving people that, that you're in conflict with. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also forgave you. And that's a commandment from God. See, if you refuse to forgive, there are consequences. Let's turn to Ephesians 4, 26. And I'm reading from the NIV this time. No, first I will read from the time. The Amplified. He says, When anger, angry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath do not let your wrath, your expectations, your fury, or indignations last until the sun go down. That was one of the versions in the Amplified, but you know, I just wanted to bring that out. But in the NIV, it, to me, was a lot more clear. And it says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down when you are angry. Do not let the sun go down when you are angry. And it goes further to say, No give place to the devil. I've heard testimonies. Uh, especially from married couples that uh, 
you know, they have disagreements. And, you know, it goes back and forth, back and forth. And uh, as time goes by, you know, they go to bed and, and then they're still angry with each other. See, a lot of times there's conflict happens when you, you're trying to, trying to change, change your spouse to the way that you want them to go, actually. So there's that confrontation between spouses that, you know, uh, you, you want them to, to conform to what you like, but it doesn't work that way. I don't think so, to married couples. And it says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So don't go to bed while you're still angry. Why? Because it gives the devil the opportunity as far as verse 27 says, nor give place to the devil. See, when the devil, when you give, when you go to bed angry and you're still upset with your spouse, you have this unforgiving spirit, right? Because you, you did not clear it up and then go to bed. So as you're, you're sleeping, you're still angry. And what you're doing is that you're opening doors for the enemy to come in. And he put, you know, the enemy is so subtle. He comes in and, and then he actually keeps you awake with all the thoughts that you have any disagreements with your husband or wife prior to going to sleep. So we ought to clear everything up before we even go to bed. Because if not, the enemy will come in and put all kind of thoughts inside of you and make your life miserable. And I'm lost. <coughs> Where am I? Ephesians 4, 26. Okay. See, we are not to give the devil an opportunity if we don't forgive. Because if we give the enemy an opportunity, he does his destructive work, his destructive work in us. See, the root of... You, you become bitter. You see, when, when you cannot have your way, you come, become bitter. And you know, when you're bitter, it's like the tentacle of, let's see, the tacos that we used to get. You know how tacos get all the tentacles? When you're bitter, it affects your thought life. So if you're still angry at your spouse and go to bed, it affects your thought life, right? Mm -hmm. So you think all kinds of things, and that's the enemy putting those thoughts in your in your life when when you you're asleep. Because you see, when you have bitterness and anger, and you open doors for the devil, that's what he does. He just put works on your thought life. He works on your attitude. And it works on your emotions. Because a bitter spirit reflects on your words and your actions. And I'm pretty sure that you married couples are not very civil at times. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm speaking truth. I mean, you know. We're human beings, so we, we have this, you know, when we're angry and we're bitter, the kind of things that come out sometimes is not, not as pleasant as it should be. But that's why it says, before you go to bed, forgive, get things cleared up. Because you leave the doors open for the devil to come in, and when the devil comes in, 
And he knows you better than you know yourself sometimes. He works up your thoughts. Oh, man, everybody, you're supposed to do this, that, blah, 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 blah. You know, can do and then this and that. Then your attitudes change. Oh, man, what am I going to do? And a lot of times, you know, Especially women, I hear this a lot from women. <laughs> they give the man the silent treatment as if the man failed, right? They do. Uh, they do. I prefer the silent treatment. They, they, you know, the women, they just say, forget this, man, I'm going to give the silent treatment. And that's my revenge on him. And they give the silent treatment, and the man. As if they care, that's right. Let them go in one ear and out the ear. But a lot of you don't go through that, right? Praise the Lord. So you don't have an unforgiving spirit that everything, when you come into confrontation with your husband or your wife, you get it cleared up right away. Praise the Lord. <laughs> See, when we have unforgiveness, it damages our relationship with God. It damages our relationship with God. When you look at Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 19, uh, 14, 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, Neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. Amen. So what does it mean? You see, unforgiveness creates a barrier in your fellowship with God. It creates a barrier. How can you be right with God and be at odds with someone else cannot see no matter when you have that barrier between yourself and God no matter how much you come to church you cannot restore that barrier that fellowship because you see the fellowship is you have that unforgiveness spirit and God is, is always forgiving and you have in an unforgiving spirit then you create that barrier so that fellowship is not possible so you can come to church as often as you like but if you still have that unforgiveness in your heart there's still that wall that that, that blocks you from, from receiving you can hear this many many sermons that you like but if you still have that unforgiving spirit, it still is not going to minister to you. You still put up that wall. There's still that wall between you and God. So does it mean we lose our salvation if we have that unforgiving spirit? Does it mean that we lose our salvation? No. We do not lose our salvation because of that barrier that He created between God with that unforgiving spirit. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. It hinders our spiritual growth. Because there is no fellowship with God, it hinders our spiritual growth. 
See, the understanding of God's word become limited. We have a hard time because of the unforgiving spirit. We try, but it, 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 it doesn't, doesn't register because the unforgiving spirit is inside of you. Our prayers become ineffective. You can pray, pray to the blue moon turns yellow. It becomes ineffective because of the unforgiving spirit. Mark 11 talks about that. 25 to 26. Let's put eyes on that. Mark 11, 25. says whenever you pray you are praying or whenever you stand praying if you have anything anything against anyone what does it say forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses you have anything anything so you cannot have unforgiveness in your heart and it goes on to say in 26, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. So there's the barrier when you have this unforgiveness in your heart. This, you cannot have that pure relationship with God if you have unforgiveness. See, you can worship and worship, but your worship is empty because you have an unforgiving spirit. So what do we do? What do we do to remove that spirit of unforgiveness? What do we do to remove that Spirit of unforgiveness. We lay it down. We recognize. First of all, you got to recognize that you have an unforgiving spirit. Some people they just do not recognize that they, they have an unforgiving spirit. So first, you got to do is recognize that you have an unforgiving spirit. And you have to acknowledge that unforgiveness is a sin. It is a sin. Right. Unforgiveness is a sin. Because you are going against what the Word of God says. It is a sin. And you have to make that decision to remove that unforgiving spirit. We all, every day, we have choices. We pick and choose. You have to choose to get rid of that unforgiving spirit. And you have to confess it to God and repent. Confess it to God and repent. And you have to ask the Spirit of God to give you the strength. To give you the strength to give up the right to have that unforgiving spirit. Because that unforgiving spirit causes you to retaliate, to have hostility, to have resentment, and to have bitterness. Uh, you know, I heard this testimony about this, this, this uh, wife and her husband would always come home drunk. When he comes home drunk, actually, then he would beat her up. And it came to a point where, you know, she, she had, you know, she accepted that, that every time they were drunk, they, they should get beaten up. And as I was reflecting back on that testimony, I was thinking, how long that bitterness and unforgiving spirit was in that person? 
until she got rid of me. And she told me that, you know, she has gone for, 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 for that unforgiving spirit to be gone. She has gone for forgiveness on that. But the years and years of that abuse that she carried with her until she got to a point where, hey, just, I, I got to give it to God. Only God can do that for me to have given up the resentment and unforgiving spirit. You know, as far as that goes too, you know, uh, you have to be able to forgive yourself too now. Some people have a hard time forgiving their own selves for what they have done in the past. And you think about it. Maybe you had an, uh, uh, an affair and it caused your marriage to break up. You've got to forgive yourself. And then you've got to leave with that. Or if you, in your younger days, had an abortion, the guilt that you felt, you have to be able to forgive yourself. And all of that can be done only by the Spirit of God. You cannot, cannot do it on your own. You have to have, ask God to help you forgive. And a lot of people go through that, that time of unforgiveness. So let's turn to Luke now, Luke 6. Luke 6, 27, 28. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. It's a hard thing. Yeah. But with the Spirit of God in you, the Spirit of God in you, you can do it. Because in Philippians 4.13, it tells you about, you can do all things. All, all things. It may be hard, but you can do it. See, when you do these things, to love your enemy, to go to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you, your attitude starts to change. When you begin to look people at a different light, then you can start to pray for them instead of being bitter at them or angry at them you start to pray for them Hallelujah. and you can transform your heart you see the whole thing about this is that when we talk about renewing our mind or having the mind of Christ these, these things all come into play when we need to transform our lives, we have to have the mind of Christ and we have to have uh, the Word of God in our heart in order to make this kind of transformation in our lives. And like I said, you can do it. You can make that change. You can get rid of that unforgiving spirit into a forgiving spirit. See, when God works in our heart, 
we will begin to see the signs of unforgiveness. How many times that you have encountered or had confrontation with people that you don't even want to associate with them? You see them coming down, you, you kind of avoid it or you turn away. There's many a times that, you know, when you had confrontation with, and you wanted to retaliate, and you see that person, you get bitter again. And you turn away and walk the other way. But when the Spirit of God comes into you and changes you, you'll be delighted to see them because you've been praying for them. And when you see them, you can go and come there. Say a kind word. It may be at your workplace that you suffer all these things. And instead of being bitter and angry, maybe buy them lunch or something. To go to them. See this. is going to change and that the people you avoid will approach with a smile and a positive attitude some people they like to have confrontations they like to <coughs> always have confrontation so what do I suggest I always suggest these people and they always tell me oh you know, this, 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 and then that. I just tell them smile and walk away. Because if you retaliate, you get more bitter, more angry, more hostile, and it escalates up and up. So if you smile and walk away, there's no chance for the enemy to come in and, and, and give you all those kind of negative spirits. Be wise. And go according to what God's word says. In 27. Love your enemies. To go to them. And pray for them. <coughs> See the key. Is to trust God in everything that you do. Trust God in everything that you do. And I don't mean just trust in Him, but steadfast trust that you really believe in what the God, in the Word of God says. Proverbs 3 5 tells us that. That we need to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lead not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he, and he shall direct your paths. Trust in him in everything that you do. As soon as that unforgiving spirit springs up, cast it down. In the name of Jesus. Smile and walk away. Trust in God in everything that you, you encounter. See, God will help you every step of the way to change, to change you from an unforgiving spirit to a forgiving spirit. Because He wants to change you. He wants to change you into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. He wants you to be exactly like Him. See, only God's grace is strong enough to break the bondage of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a bondage. So I leave you with this. If you have any, any unforgiveness, 
give it to God and he will take care of you. It may be hard. It may be hard. But give it to God. That's the only way that you can get rid of this unforgiveness. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we are so grateful for your love, for your words. And Father, that you will give us all forgiving spirit. That you will remove any unforgiveness in our hearts, Lord, this day. We need no part of any unforgiveness. For we are your sons, Lord. your daughters, Lord. And we all belong to the children of God, the family of God. Our Father, we are so grateful for for everything that you do for us, Lord. That you have instilled in our hearts the love of Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. That was very good. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, he, he touched on many areas that I used to go through, too. You know, I think one of the uh, things that uh, we get resentment and bitterness of what people did, uh, not knowing the full scope of of how God uh, can only bless us and improve in our daily walk of life. Now, he mentioned one is to renew the mind. The other is, I mean, he mentioned many other places, but um, he mentioned about finances. If, if, if it's not what uh, I've mentioned this to the church now, uh, if people owe you money, you know, uh, don't don't uh, 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 come against that in any fashion. Pray about that and put it in God's hand. And but if you, as a church, owe people money, and you think that uh, I remember mentioning this that. Jesus coming back soon, so everything will be alright. You know, uh, if Jesus comes back soon, I'm going into the next life. But if you don't settle that, you go you gotta settle that in the next life. That's positive that I know about. And it's gonna be worse. So if you owe any person money, you pay it out. Because a lot of people, Christians, say, Oh Jesus coming back soon, so oh uh, you know it's a hard attitude that uh, if they have a struggle with paying back money, then God can understand the struggle, but then the struggle means that uh, you don't know the truth of his word of how you can be prosperous. You know, so you need to get into the word. And, and, and you know, um, if people owe you money, you don't know what they're really going to, but if they, you know, uh, owe you money and you see that they're living it up yet and not paying you anything don't fall in the trap of the enemy you keep on praying for that people okay that somehow you know um, but let's hope that it doesn't occur to Christians okay Amen. pay up your debt because if not you're going to settle the next life and it could be worse off it's absolute truth I know about that God revealed that to me, you know, 
So that's why I can forgive people. But if people owe you money too now, what you can do is you can make an effort, a nice effort of saying, you know, at least one, don't bond them. But at least sometimes let them know that, oh, uh, you know, you, you see them living it out, right? You know, you see them spending, spending, uh, they get the money, but they're not paying you one cent. So what you do is you make it an effort, write them a letter, give them a call and say, oh, you know, when you have a chance, uh, I see that you, you know, uh, you're doing all right, so if you can pay me monthly, or, you know, like that. And don't bug them after that. Because it's your position to work your faith, to say that, you know, uh, you can you can pay what you can. Okay? Now, remember the last scripture he brought from? Trust the Lord with all that heart. And lean up to thy own understanding. Huh? You know what that is talking about? Trust the Lord in all thine heart and lean up to thy own understanding. Hmm? It means that you need the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God is the Word of God. And now, what comes with the Word of God? Faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. What is that saying? The evidence of things not seen. That's where it's coming strongly. Now faith is trusting and believing God. Amen. There's a spiritual matter in your heart that when you trust and believe God with all your heart, then everything is the substance that, uh, that you believe in for that you will receive. That's what faith is. And it always happens in the spiritual realm. It's talking about your heart. Believe it and trust in God. Okay? Now, renewing the mind. What does the renewing the mind do? It makes a tree a better tree and the fruits a better fruit. That's what it is. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If you, your tree is good and getting better by the word of God, you're going to be speaking the fruits of the Spirit. And, and, and to me, that's something that the church is being elevated to start to operate truly how Jesus operated. Amen? Amen. So can we have the praise and worship thing come up? <laughs>